I cut my finger on my shorts the other day. I didn't think it was a big deal until today when I was looking at it. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a pretty decently sized gash. Yeah, anyway, I hope it gets better. I get asked a lot what an air company I use. I've used 64 audio, or 1964 ears. But I currently use JH Audio. What one is better? Let me explain. In my opinion, this is all completely my opinion. Your opinion may be very different. That's totally fine. I'll explain what works for me. Putting my table together. Okay, so I get asked, like I said before, what in your company that I use. I've used this company. I also have used this company. These are the current in-ears. These are the backups or the ones that I had before. I'm gonna go over the 64s first. So this is the old case. New case is a little different. This is more like a Pelican type of thing, like hard, waterproof. Actually, you can't really see it, but I had to use a screwdriver to pry this open when I first got them because it was sealed from the the airplane. It was pressurized, basically. When you open it, I added this. This doesn't come with it. You get an adapter, a little cleaner, quarter inch, which I took that out in somewhere. And then you get the actual, actual ears. The cool thing about this guy is you have each spot for your in-ears and then your cable. That's all padded in foam too. Again, this is the old case. I think 64 just released a new version of this that's like an official Pelican, I think. Here are the actual in-ears. These are the V3s or the triple drivers. I had them for like six years and they were great. Like they, they worked awesome. Great first pair of in-ears. The main reason I got new ones is because the seal in these no longer fit. Great in-ears overall. Now for for my main in-ears right now, JH Audio. Case is metal, it's a lot smaller. You actually open it. This didn't come with it, I brought that with myself. Foam padded inside. We'll get to the in-ears in a minute. So it comes with this dehumidifier, that way there's like no moisture or anything that can get inside of the in-ears and it just keeps everything like just, just not humid which traveling that's a huge benefit because if humidity gets in the actual in the actual in-ears then that can create problems came with similar thing to what was in 64 like cleaner tool it also came with a screwdriver which i'll explain what that's for later it didn't come with a quarter inch i brought i put one in there just because i have a million of them lying around and just the inside of the metal case Onto the actual in-ears. These in-ears, similar to the 64s in design and everything, these are actually eight drivers. These are the JH13 V2 Pros. So there's eight drivers in each ear. Four highs, two mids, two lows. The cool thing about this, this model and one of the main reasons I went with JH Audio instead of 64 is because of this guy right here. And this is actually what the screwdriver is for. So the cool thing about this is these are little dials and these are attenuators for the bass drivers. So you can go from anywhere from 0 dB to plus 12 dB of gain on just the bass frequencies alone. That's awesome. I use this all the time because I play in different venues and different areas where the bass in the room has different feels and different vibes causing me to need to adjust this and this works great. I, I love it. Like, can't say enough about this. The actual in-ears are awesome. Like they, they're just super sturdy, super robust. I mean, look at this cable. Like this could like withstand a nuclear blast versus the cable on the 64s. It's a lot more delicate and, and more precious than 
this guy. I feel like I could like tow a car with how thick and robust this cable is, which is a big thing for traveling musicians or anybody that's gonna be taking their in-ears like out and actually using them on the road. One thing that I did notice when I was researching the two companies, GH Audio's drivers are all in phase. And basically how they do that is, from my understanding, they have like small tubes on the high frequency drivers and they just kind of go around the in-ear a little bit so the lows can kind of catch up because high frequencies move faster than low frequencies. But these guys, aren't in phase, which that's a big thing, especially when you're like cramming like eight drivers, 10 drivers, 12 drivers into an in-ear, because the more drivers you have that are out of phase, the worse the problem's gonna get. So being in phase is a pretty significant thing. Also, I said this before, but just the build quality on these is much stronger than these guys. Like just not even with the cable, like go the actual pins going into the, the in-ear, these are just, they're just two, these are just two, uh, two little pins holding on to this whole, whole in-ear versus this robust monster of a thing that actually screws on to the cable. Like it, it plugs in with the four pins and then it screws down and locks it into place so that this cable is not going to break and there's not so much stress being put on the pins within the in-ear. With these, I've noticed that these are a lot more punchy and a lot clearer than these guys. And I think there's two reasons for that. One, there's more drivers in these guys, so they're automatically just gonna have more punch, more, more headroom and everything else. But I think the other reason why these sound a lot better and a lot clearer is because the drivers are in phase versus these guys. And again, these are great in-ears. I love these, I use these for six years but I think these are a little bit better. But when I buy things, I always look to see how much each individual thing was. The reason I got these at the time, they were $400 for triple drivers, and these are $1,300, $1,400. So for JH Audio, my exact model is gonna be $1,300. I'll put links in the description too. So for 64, they don't have a eight driver configuration for their stage applications, which is what I'm using these for. I'm using these for like traveling musicians that play on stage, but their A6T drivers, which is a six driver configuration, starts at 1299. So just based on that, I can get two extra drivers and I can have control of how much bass response I get. And this cable is so much thicker and so much more robust for the same price as 64. But if I wanted to get nine drivers, that drives the price all the way up to $700 for one extra driver. Cable's not nearly as good and the case is kind of flimsy compared to a metal hockey puck looking thing that could be take a car running over it. So all that to be said, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to choose what works for you and what works best for you. I know 64 has those Adele technology things. I've never used them, but I've been told by other musicians that they're amazing and they love them. I would love to try some eventually, but for now, I'm sticking with my GH Audio just because they're just universally, they fit more applications than my 64 Audio in-ears. These are great though. I used them for six years, like I said, and they never failed me and they never gave me any issues. The cable died once out of six years, which is pretty good, but I just think I would rather spend the same amount of money and have the flexibility of this guy and just it be more, more solid just because I'm pretty hard on in-ears when you travel and stuff, things happen. Hopefully all that made sense. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Cool. It's been a couple hours. Remember yesterday when I said that I needed to get stronger coffee so that I wouldn't have headaches later in the day? Still haven't got the coffee and I have a headache. <laughs>